Let every kindred, every tribe on this terrestrial ball to him all my chest. and bless his holy name magnify the king of glory worship him in the beauty of his holiness thank him thank him thank him in jesus mighty name and everybody shout amen, amen. let's be seated just for a few minutes just for a few minutes i want to first of all thank god that you defy the rain and you came can we give the lord a big hand of praise for that someone said someone said okay, before i go on please um i don't know who's in charge whether media or technical the flickering of that light if you can minimize it is not usually good for the eyes okay i know you want to make it look uh, um, um social media friendly but it's not good for the eyes it's very dangerous so please make it steady don't let it flicker anymore thank you very much somebody said that oh when it rains in abuja is an excuse for people not to come to church but um that has been proven wrong here at least here so give the lord a big hand of praise for that hallelujah amen hallelujah. and um they said i should do 30 minutes but 30 minutes is even too much i'll cut it to 20 minutes i think that will be much better so we can have more time hallelujah in first samuel chapter 30 i'll read from verse number one and then we'll take one or two prayer items first samuel chapter 30 verse number uh one two three that was the scripture I was going to open up with yesterday but the holy ghost just took us the way we went now it happened when david and his men came to ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded. They had invaded uh, the south. But, you know, we, that scripture begins with, it happened when David arrived or came to Ziklag on the third day. Someone say third day. Alright, so that means it must be a continuation of some chapters before. It must be a continuation of a particular storyline. Because for you to understand the storyline... You must, you must go back to chapter 29. It says, on the third day they arrived in Ziklag. On the third day. And when they got to Ziklag, everywhere was already burnt with fire. It was, it was really bad news. It came to meet, you know, when it got to Ziklag. I, I'll go back to the preceding chapter. But look at this first. Very quickly, verse number 2. So it says that, Ziklag had been born to fire and had taken captive the women and those who were there and from small to great. They did not kill anyone but carried them away and went their way. So the intention was to use them as ransom, like a kidnapping situation, to get money or to turn them to slaves and use them for cheap labor. Okay? Now verse number three. So David and his men came to the city and there it was, burnt with fire okay and their wives their sons and their daughters had been taken captive i am praying for you especially for those who are ministers of the gospel itinerant ministers business people professionals who travel here and there for business uh business uh, contract 
the ministers who travel here and there for missions and ministration, I pray while you are away, God will keep your home in the name of Jesus Christ. May you never come back home to meet disaster in the mighty name of Jesus. So this was a major disaster, but then the Bible says in verse 4, so then David and the people were with him lifted up their voices and they wept until they had no more power to weep. That's, that's terrible. When a man weeps to the point where the, the reservoir of tears in your gland has become dry, it's really pathetic and sorrowful. They had no more power to weep. So they were, you know the story. But then, I would have thought they would have even given thanks to God first for allowing them to come back to see the situation. Now, what's the background story? If you go to chapter 29, just five minutes and then we start to pray. If you go to chapter 29, here was David and Achish. David was roaming around the place because he was under pursuit from Saul. Saul wanted to kill him. So David was going from place to place and finally ran into a destiny helper. His name, Achish. He was a Philistine from the camp of Gath. A warrior. So here is what happened before the story of chapter 30. Verse number 1. And the lords of the Philistines passed. No, verse number 1. Please, verse number 1. Then the Philistines gathered together all their armies at Aphek, and the Israelites camped by the fountain which is in Jezreel. Verse number 2. And the lords of the Philistines passed in review by hundreds and by thousands, but David and his men passed in review at the rear with Achish. Verse number 3. Then the princes of the Philistines said, What are these Hebrews doing here? All right. And Achish said to the prince of the Philistines, Is this not David, the servant of Saul, king of Israel, who has been with me these days? all these years and to this day i have not found one fault in him may god give you testimony even before unbelievers now Achish was a philistine and he's saying concerning david i have not found fault in him all these years he has been with me may god give us integrity may god give us testimony in the mighty name of jesus now let me fast forward verse five six and seven so David said to Achish, I would like to go with you on this battle. And then the lords of the Philistines said to Achish, he said, listen, this man you brought here, he's a Hebrew. We don't know if he's going to betray us in the battlefield. They said to Achish, you are the one that we know. Can you ask him to return with his men? We don't want him to fight alongside with us. So Achish goes back, maybe verse 6, 7, 8, and said to David, Unfortunately, the lords of the Philistines do not favor you. Let's, let's look at it. He said, The lords of the Philistines do not favor you. David was very upset. Okay? David was very upset. Then Achish said, verse 6, Then Achish called David and said to him, Surely as the Lord lives, you have been very upright, and you're going out and you're coming in is with me. In the, in the army is good in my sight. For this day I have not found evil in you since the day of your coming to me. Nevertheless, the lords do not favor you. Now, if I ask you, is this good or bad news? Huh? No. If you didn't know what happened in chapter 30, will this be good or bad news? Bad news. Now, David and his men, put it here. David and his men in those days, they were so broke. The only way of getting revenue and income was to go alongside and fight what we call mercenary. They ran a security outfit and a mercenary group like Wagner. Is Wagner you call it? <laughs> David was always helping people fight. So he went to fight alongside with the Philistines. And the, the result of this is they will get spoil of battle. Then they will be paid and they will get gold and silver. Any spoil they get becomes theirs. So it was a means of livelihood for them. But now, they said, I'm sorry, the Lord should not favor you. Then verse number 7, Therefore return now and go in peace, that you may not displease the lords of the Philistines. Return and go in peace. That's absolute rejection, disappointment, failure. Therefore return now and go in peace. Verse number 8. Go to verse 8, please. So David said to Achish, protest. Everybody say protest. 
So there was a protest. David said to Achish, but what have I done? And to this day, what have you found in your servant as long as I have been with you that I may not go and fight the enemies of my Lord, the king? So David was saying, what have I done? Why won't I go fight? Now, his eye was on the rewards. Get this clear. His eye was on the pay. Get this clear. David has had these idiosyncrasies of what will be done to the man who defeats this Goliath? Do you remember that story? They said the king will give him money. One, two. Wife, three. Exemption from taxes. That has been David's pattern from childhood. Reward, reward, reward. What do I get for this battle? What do I get for this battle? So there was a major setback here. They said, go back. The lost do not want you. David said, no, I no agree. I no agree. What have I, what have I done? What have you found in me? But Achish insisted. He said, I'm sorry. You are a good man. Nothing found against you. But the laws do not favor you. Can I pray for you? May you cooperate with God. May you understand when God is at work. May God give you insight, discernment. Unknown to David, this, is, was, this was from the Lord. The disappointment was from the Lord. There are many of you who are saying, Lord, but why? Why is this happening? Why the rejection? My friend, I come to say to you tonight, God is working out something in your favor. Your amen is not vibrant. I say God is working out something in your favor. And you will miss it. You will never miss it. So, long story short, so we can start praying in a moment. Long story short, insisted. They said, oh, you can't go with us. Verse 10, 11, and 12. So, Eki said to him, early in the morning, he said, Oga, early in the morning, early in the morning, don't even wait for the sun to rise. Carry your load, carry your men, and oh yeah, move. They were all disappointed with their heads bowed in shame. And they began their journey back to where? Ziklag, where their family was located. Their headquarters was in Ziklag. Unknown to him, it was God who didn't let him go on that trip. If he went on that trip, most of those battles those days takes how many months? Three months, four months, five months in the battle. He would have returned to find out their wives are pregnant. Their children already grown, they are in slavery. Some of them have been sold to Ishmaelites as slaves. But within three days, ever say three days. Within three days of this event of invasion of Ziklag, God turned things around. God was in the Philistines asking David to go back. But David thought it was a spiritual attack. Some of you, some of the things you call attack is actually God working out his purpose for your life. It's actually God saying, there's something bigger I have in stock for you. Lift your hands and say, yes! Ah! He went back very sad. Then they got to Ziklag. When they got to Ziklag, the same time the same moment, the same hour, when the Philistines, the Lord of Philistines, were rejecting him, was when the invasion was taking place. Check your Bible. It was the same time, the same moment, they were invading. But David could not discern. Something is going wrong. God wanted to pull him back, but he was too busy. So God sometimes will use the negative to draw you in course. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. The strings quickly. We're about to pray. He got to Ziklag. When he got to Ziklag, they had burned everywhere with fire. Guess what? Everybody started doing blame game. And that's very common among us Christians. You are looking at 99 things that God didn't do. Or, no. 
You are looking at one thing God didn't do. You forgot 99 things that he did well. You are looking at one thing pastor didn't say or he didn't do. You forgot 99 things pastor did well. You are looking at one thing I didn't do right. You blame me for one thing I didn't do well. But you simply forget 99 things that I did very well. You see that is common amongst men. At the brink of Red Sea, they forgot all the good things God did in Egypt. They only remember that Moses brought them here to kill them. What does the Bible say? He said they started weeping. And after weeping, they picked up stones. And they said they were going to stone who? David. Can somebody just take a moment and meditate before you start complaining? And, and blaming God and harassing God before you start throwing the blame blame assault and play the blame game can somebody just think deep and say wait a moment wait a moment could this be the reason why we were turned down could it be the reason why the application was not granted you applied and they refused your application and all you will say is God what have I done you didn't do anything wrong could it be the reason why my application was turned down? Could it be the reason why it didn't work out? Could it be the reason why they didn't give me that post, that promotion? Could it be the reason why that political office, I didn't get it? Could this be the reason? Ah, scripture tells me. This is why I fear God. Then, hear this. <laughs> David. David encouraged himself in the Lord, verse number 5 and 6. He encouraged himself in the Lord. And while he was communing with God, he said, give me the effort. And while he was communing with God, these are my thoughts. God began to say to David, David, you are too busy. Hear me clearly. I orchestrated that move. If you stayed any one day longer, your family would have been gone. I brought you back here. So you can recover on time. Then David got up. He said to his guys, let's go. Let's go. It's of the Lord that we were turned down. It's of the Lord that the application was refused. He said to his guys, let us go. Fast forward. They went. They got to a point. They found an Egyptian. Verse number 11 and 12. Or for summer 30, they found an Egyptian. The Egyptian was there dying. The Bible says he hadn't eaten anything for three days. He was sick. Wait a moment. The man said, We were the ones who invaded Ziklag. Is that what he says? Yeah, he said we were the ones who invaded Ziklag. But I became sick. And my master abandoned me. And they moved on. That's what happens in the real world. When you're on the cutting edge, you are needed. When you become sick, ministerially sick, financially sick, in your profession or job, sick, they look for alternative and they move on he was replaced immediately and the lord said to me he said pray son that you will never be sick ministerially you will never be speak sick spiritually they are quick to look for replacement lift your hands up to heaven say father in the name of jesus keep me on the cutting edge let me never fall sick i will not be sick spiritually i'll not be sick physically I'll not be sick financially. I'll not be sick in my career. Keep me on the cutting edge in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Just for one second, open your mouth and pray. Keep me on the cutting edge. I refuse to be sick in the mighty name of Jesus. Emotional, spiritual, physical, financial, ministerial. I will not be sick. I refuse to be sick. Keep me on the cutting edge, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One more minute for my 20 minutes to end. I will take this prayer. I've been there. And I've seen a lot of this too many times happen. 
He was their choice speaker for conventions. He was their choice minister for special conferences. Global doors open. But they ran into a scandal. And all the doors shut. He became spiritually sick. I've been there. I've seen too many of this. Everybody gravitated towards him. He put so much crowd. He was on the cutting edge. Until he had health challenges. And he couldn't move. He became immobile. And they went for alternatives. Before long, there was replacement. I've seen too many of this. He was a brain tank. The wisdom bank for that organization is a multinational blue chip organization. He was a wisdom brain tank. Doing so well. Bringing so much revenue for the organization. Until he had issues in his marriage that affected his health. And couldn't perform much. And they paid him off and said services no longer required. They found a replacement immediately. I pray once again you will not be sick. You will remain on the cutting edge. In the mighty name of Jesus. And finally. Do we have an administration coming up before? Okay. Please, please. Start, start filing out. The time is not on our side. And finally. David gave him food. David gave him bread. The man bounced back. The man bounced back. You will recover. You bounce back. And let me also tell you this. The people, the church, may God forgive the church. Our soldiers who were on the cutting edge, they became sick. They had issues. Rather than us gather around and nourish them and help them resuscitate, we abandoned them. A man said, I was abandoned because I was sick. But the enemy camp came. And what did David do? David resuscitated him. Who became instrumental to David's victory? The same man. The people that should have blessed the church and benefited the church, we killed them. Others saw them, nurtured them, and raised them. And they became instrumental. Lift your hands and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, today I receive the grace, the anointing for total recovery. Say, I recover all. Open your mouth and pray. I recover all, all, all that the Amalekites have taken from my life. I recover all. I recover all. I recover. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. The next time disappointments come, thank God for it. Go back home and read a part of the story. What David got from the Amalekite was not what they stole from him only. He also got theirs. And what the Amalekites got from other places they raided. Check that story. 15 villages David sent spoils and gifts to 15 villages and towns. If he went on that battle of Achish, he won't get what he got. If he went on that battle of Achish, he would have lost his family. Give God thanks for disappointments. Appreciate him because something is working out for you.